Hello, everybody. This is Blackbird, and you are listening to the Blackbird Podcast. I want to begin by thanking all of you for listening to the very first episode of the show. It took me a long time to uh, be able to do the first episode because I was really being brought down. It was like a feeling almost this cliche of a, a weight on my shoulders. There was something that was just preventing me from being able to do this show the way I wanted to do it. It's a little thing called fear. And I think fear is a good thing to be thinking about this time of year because it's almost Halloween. And what is Halloween other than a holiday based on fear, based on the grotesque, based on the psychotic I have been thinking about doing something like this for probably nine years. I first had this idea kind of pop into my head out of nowhere. I was, I think I was probably coming home from school one day and I had been just getting into microphones and recording music and I just had this little thought pop into my head. What if you did your own radio show. Now you gotta think this was 2011, not 2020, so podcasts, they existed, but they weren't exactly mainstream. I wouldn't call them mainstream um, at the time. I mean, that was way back in the day. I mean, that was back when Joe Rogan might have been one of the only guys doing it. I mean, it seems like that way today because his show is so popular, but I digress. Like I said, I got this idea in 2011 to make a podcast or like a oh i mean a radio show because podcast didn't exist at the time but i had a lot of trouble trying to get an internship at local radio stations so that really never happened i mean and i thought that was it i thought that something like that would never happen i would never have my own radio show uh what we now what the kids now call a podcast it did like a lot of people's ideas do for them. I mean, the idea, I ignored it, but it festered. I went on about my daily life, and every once in a while, I'd get a comment like, oh, you have an incredible voice for radio. I kept hearing that. You have a great, ra- you have like a radio voice. And honestly, I didn't really believe anything anybody was telling me. I just thought it was some sort of strange compliment that they were trying to pay to me. And I never took it seriously. Fast forward to 2019. I get a basic idea of uh, what I want the show to be, but I don't record it in 2019 because I don't have the stones to do it. And the thing that was really really preventing me from doing it was the fear of rejection. I constantly thought about what would happen if I put this out, if I made it and nobody cared or nobody liked it or nobody thought I was funny enough. Anybody out there that's had issues with insecurity, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that sometimes those insecurities can outweigh any sort of optimism or positivity that you used to have or ever had and that was the case I didn't think anybody would listen to this and I thought oh well I can't have my own radio show can't have my own podcast who am I I thought that who am I how self-deprecating it's a ridiculous question I mean everybody is worthy of putting themselves out there online because everybody is a unique individual and offers something unique to the world and I just started realizing last year that what my gift was could be podcasting and it really excited me because it made me think well wow I don't have to go schmooze with all these radio executives I don't have to go try to get an internship I don't have to go and try to get an education in this I can learn on the fly I can learn as I do it. Like right now. I'm doing that right now. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it seems to be working. I mean, I'm already six minutes in and I didn't know if I had enough material for 
one minute, really. I mean, that's how deep that something like fear and anxiety can go. Another thing that comes to mind is the fact that right before we took our tail and run in life, before we give up on something, we have that fear. That fear of not being accepted. The fear of not being liked or not being good enough to have your own show or be a creator. That comes out. And when you think about it, who who is really supposed to create? Who is supposed to do this and do that? There, as humans, we make up with all these rules and limitations, but in reality, anybody could do anything. You'd have to be a moron to think that, oh, this person's only successful because they're smarter than me or because, oh, he's, his podcast does well because he's funny, but I'm not funny. You can be whatever you want you are whoever you want to be and no nobody was you know inherently better at podcasting than anybody else i mean even somebody like rogan the reason why he's successful is because he worked on his craft repeatedly he did that damn show and he did it for years and who knows you know how how much money he even made off of it in the early days or if he made any but taking that chance that's the first step you know, so that's what really what I'm trying to explain to you guys. I keep rambling, but that's what I'm trying to say is that doing this podcast is a risk. Doing anything in life is a risk. You know, waking up and going outside in the morning is a risk. Everything in life is a risk, but you got to be able to take a risk for yourself. You got to be able to bet on yourself because other people might not be betting on you. And when it comes to putting something off, you know, days, they become weeks and weeks become months in months become years you have to just take that chance and in the and when it comes to the entertainment space like what i'm interested in and i'm sure a lot of you might be interested in you really have to take that leap of faith it's like having faith in god you gotta have faith in yourself if other people doubt you let them doubt you someone saying that you don't have the skill or talent or money or ability to do something isn't reality it's their belief. And so why would I want to live up to someone's belief? I need to live up to my own belief in myself. And that's what I want you guys to do. If there's something you've been wanting to do, take a chance. Go out and do it. Why not? Why not? I mean, you know, I, I'm i also an actor in my spare time. And I've been working on that craft uh, for the past three or four years um and you get a lot of no's when you act anybody who's acted before you know you get a lot of no's but those no's they build you up they make you thin make your skin thicker those no's make you stronger stronger than you could ever become with a yes i also want to talk about the fact that nasa astronaut kate rubens who is also a flight engineer, will vote in the 2020 U.S. presidential election from space, from the ISS, also known as the International Space Station, to be exact. Isn't that crazy? Kate Rubin's voting in the presidential election from space. Man, you know that the country isn't doing well when astronauts are in space voting <laughs> voting instead of doing science i mean that's what i always thought i thought oh they're gonna go up into the international space station and they'll probably be thinking about biology and virology and all this stuff and astronomy but no this year that's the current political climate the current political climate is so desperate and so such a really a bitter struggle between the democrats and republicans this year that kate is worried about the election <laughs> which i'm sure you know she probably makes a good living and and loves her the amazing life she's been able to lead going to space several times i don't think this is the first time she's been to space no i'm no i know it's not the first time she's been and then she still is wondering what's going on down here down here on earth on that tiny blue dot that's incredible that's, I mean, there's nothing more patriotic than going, 
from what I read, up between 200 and 250 miles um, above Earth and still wondering if Trump will be a re-election, if Trump will be re-elected or if Biden will be elected into his first presidential term. <laughs> Man. I'm not going to say who I want to win. I want to try to remain neutral um, in this election. But, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, and I, and also I, I think I read that uh, Kate Rubens isn't the only um, U.S. astronaut that's going to be voting from the ISS this year. I believe there's around, I think, at least three others that are going to space uh, soon. or No, actually, I think on Halloween. And I believe they're going to vote from space as well sometime between Halloween and November 3rd. It's just funny, I mean, to think about people in outer space worrying about what kind of country they're going to come home to. That's really incredible. I mean... I'm just glad that they're voting. I mean, if an astronaut can vote people, any of us can go to a polling station tomorrow and vote easily. Follow the astronauts. If they can do it, you can do it. Just just go out, go out and vote. That's all I'm saying. Go out and vote for whoever you like. Uh, you know, Trump, Biden, whoever it may be, an independent, whoever's on the ticket. I mean, or just write in. Write in somebody. Write in a random person. Write in a video game game character like Donkey Kong or something. Write in Link from Legend of Zelda. Put some, you know, have some fun. If you don't really want to write for a real, you know, write in a real candidate, just have some fun. Write in the Cheshire Cat. Why can't, why can't he or she become president? I mean, this is that's the American dream. Anybody can be president. <laughs> I mean, I know if Donald Trump can do it, anybody can do it. No offense, but if he can do it, anybody can. All right, I'm going to move on. For the last section, I'm going to talk about Dragon Ball Do-Rag by Thundercat. I mean, all I really want to tell you is, if you haven't heard Dragon Ball Do-Rag by Thundercat, go listen to Dragon Ball Do-Rag by Thundercat right now. If you, you can even, you can either wait till after the pod is over, or you can pause the pod right now. I won't be offended. And Open up another tab. Don't close this tab because I want you to listen to the whole episode. Please listen to the whole episode. Support the Blackbird Podcast, people. Excuse me. Support the Blackbird Podcast. All right? This is a good show, and if just support it. So, yeah, like I said, pause the video if you need to. Go listen to Dragon Ball Do-Rag and then come back. It's just an incredible song. I mean, basically, Thundercat is, he's looking, he's looking for, you know, love in his life and that's probably just a euphemism i mean i think he wants premarital sex or something like that but he wants some people may call that you know he he just wants to smash all right he wants some casual sex from a beautiful young woman and in the video he tries three times to get a woman but before that the most important part is he's walking down an alley kind of deflated and he looks over in the trash and he sees a Dragon Ball do-rag. He picks it up and puts it on and swag and drip ensue. I mean, he just, his confidence levels go through the roof all because of this goddamn Dragon Ball do-rag. Uh, it's like certain pieces of clothing can send to, they can, they can really kind of make us feel more confident. Like I remember sometimes in my life, it's just a, it, it may be a scarf. Let's say it's a scarf. Uh, it could really complete the outfit if it's a scarf I really like. Um, it might give me that extra level of drip, that extra level of swag that I need that day um, to really make a good impersonation in public or, you know, or even among friends or, or a date. You know, you could just get that extra boost of confidence, just a little bit, little bit of confidence from that particular piece of clothing that, you really love it looks good on you and that's what happens he puts this do-rag on and he has the confidence to approach just about every woman in city limits which i don't know which city he shot the video in. i'm guessing los angeles i have no idea if anybody knows please let me know which city was dragon ball do-rag filmed in i love the way he sings in the video i mean it's like a very 
I would say it's Funkadelic meets Acid, but Funkadelic back in the day really seemed like that they were already on Acid. It's kind of yeah, it's like it's it's um it's weird. It's it's like R and B meets funk, uh, kind of like Chris Brown and Funkadelic smashed into one, or Usher and Funkadelic smashed into one. That basically be the song. And yeah, he just keeps approaching different women. He says really funny lyrics. I mean, the whole song is incredible. One of them is um. What was it? Oh, yeah. That was my favorite one. Is uh, he, he says, I may smell like... No. He said... <laughs> that's the worst thing. <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> All right. No, he says, I may be covered in cat hair, but I still smell good. That's just an incredible line. I mean, that one liner. I mean, that should be on a t-shirt. wish I had a t-shirt that said that. I may be covered in cat hair, but I still smell good. I mean, just to let the women know that just because you're a sensitive man, possibly a feminine man, who owns a cat or multiple cats, that you still have a deodorant or possibly cologne on so that when they walk up to you, they can get the, get a hit of that pleasant smell. So, yeah, like I said, he just walks around to different women. I think the first two encounters he has with women are not successful. And then the third time really is the charm. In the video, he walks up to, I think the band is called Haim or Haim. H-A-I-M, I can't remember. I don't know. But he walks up to them and, which he walks up to them after he jumps out of the dumpster. <laughs> He's like stalking. <laughs> He's like stalking the band members of Haim while he's in the dumpster and he just jumps out and then he just starts kind of like uh, he takes a few steps and then he starts kind of like i think he tries to twerk a little bit or something it's a weird ass video all right yeah he dances a little bit a little sexy dance i guess and um he tries to impress the girls and two of them aren't biting and then the third girl in the band she is kind of interested i think she's she's like a she's a brunette but in the video i think her hair is dyed blonde or something and, and she's taking an interest to him and she actually starts dancing a little bit and you know she starts vibing and taking a few steps towards him and then and then the other girls in the band they just they just pull her away and then they ascend a staircase up to their apartment but man like i said dragon ball do rag by thundercat you guys need to go listen this is really one of the best songs of 2020 honestly lots of songs have come out you know WAP came out pop smokes album came out this year but i'll tell you dragon ball do rag by thundercat is definitely at the top of my list and i listen to a lot of music it's an incredible song if you like that song let me look it up for you guys real quick i think the song is called them changes yeah if you if you like thundercat after listening to dragon ball durag definitely go look at an older song he released around five years ago it's called them changes that one also has a really awesome music video but that one's more uh uh cgi or animation based i think or i don't know yeah it's a little bit of cgi and stuff i don't know but it's like i said incredible artist um if you guys know mac miller um rest in peace you guys probably know that mac miller and thundercat um were collaborating several years ago uh well actually like two years ago uh shortly before mac passed away and those songs he did with mac miller are also good i can't remember the names of them but you guys gotta listen to thundercat man he's just such a cool guy um and i just love that especially in 2020 we got a guy who is unique yeah he's a nerd and he likes it he's confident all right and so it doesn't matter that he's a nerd or maybe what some people might call a weebo okay he's a great artist like i said listen to them changes if you like dragon ball do rag and i want to thank all you guys for tuning in and thank you for listening um you know without you guys i mean i'm just speaking into a microphone talking to myself going crazy but with this audience you know or with the audience i hope to grow i think there are going to be a lot of episodes in the future so if you guys like this definitely comment down below tell me what you liked about this episode tell me what you liked about this episode and i will i will i will see you guys next time and remember if you mess with the bull you get the horns but if you mess with the bird you get the beak